Tonight, with the March primary a little more than a month away, we're taking a look at the big role Texas will play in the elections. The coronavirus outbreak has been making headlines all week, but not all of the claims you see about it online are accurate. We're fact checking some of those claims. A chilly morning in the forecast. Meteorologist Justin Horn will be here with a look at what to expect for the rest of the weekend. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9 from right here in the KSAT 12 newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. It is all hands on deck this weekend to get people signed up to vote. The deadline to register to vote in the March primary is on Monday. Tiffany Huertas takes a look at the important role that Texas will play in this year's primary and why more people are expected to head to the polls. We've registered 30,000 people last year. And this year we're on track to register 50,000 new registered voters in Texas. Brandon Johnson says at least 80% of the 50,000 people will turn out to vote. Johnson is the regional organizing manager at Move Texas, a nonprofit that works to get people excited and registered to vote. We're going to be all over this weekend really pushing that February 3rd deadline. Johnson says Texas is a major player in this year's elections. Texas is a super delegate state. Each state has a different number of delegates based on population. Texas has 228 delegates, the third largest of any state, making it a major prize on Super Tuesday. Those delegates are given out on a proportional basis based on election results. 61% of Texans are under the age of 30 and a large percentage of those are voting age. So we want to get those young people out to vote. Johnson says for a lot of people, it's their first time being able to vote in a large presidential election. So he hopes that translates to a large turnout. Bear County election officials say it's likely the turnout could meet or even exceed the turnout in 2016 for the last presidential election. In 2016, 25% of Bear County registered voters cast ballots and 18% in 2018. Move Texas is also asking people who are already registered to sign these cards, pledging they will turn out for the polls on election day. This election is about democracy, and this will also be the first time that millennials and Generation Z people outnumber baby boomers. So if they really cast their votes how they want to, they will have a great impact of how the election turns out from White House all the way down to city level. The Bear County Elections Office is extending its hours this weekend. Tomorrow they'll be open from 10 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. For hours for the rest of the weekend, just head over to KSAT.com. For The 9, Tiffany Huertas. And KSAT News at 9 is helping you keep up with all things elections in 2020. We have a newsletter that goes out every single Tuesday of this year. You can sign up for that right now at KSAT.com slash newsletters. <laughs> A $100 million donation will allow the University of Texas to help freshmen with the biggest needs beginning in the fall. The Texas Tribune reports that thanks to a gift from the Michael and Susan Dell Foundation, some freshmen will get a boost of $20,000 in financial aid to cover college living expenses. Checks will go to Pell Grant recipients with the most serious financial needs. That calculation will be based on expected family contributions of less than $1,000. These students will also have access to personalized services, including a new laptop, tutoring, career and internship planning, and financial aid coaching. A family not able to go home tonight after a house fire in Kirby. A security guard and a woman dressed as Minnie Mouse caught on camera in a scuffle and the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile gets pulled over. This is tonight's 9 at 9. Police had Anton Harris, the man convicted this week as the medical center rapist in custody two years before the attack for which he was convicted, but they released him. And that's what Paul Venema learned as prosecutors presented their case in the punishment phase of Harris's trial. In March of 2015, Harris was questioned briefly, then released. Harris is accused of raping five women in the medical center area beginning four years ago. On Wednesday, he was found guilty of raping and robbing a nurse in one of those cases. Harris's lawyers, too, plan on calling witnesses. That'll be on Monday when the trial resumes. One woman arrested after a security breach at the president's Mar-a-Lago club ends in an officer-involved shooting. Police say they were trying to pull a woman over who was driving erratically when she drove through two checkpoints on the outer perimeter of Mar-a-Lago. Officers fired shots trying to stop that driver. The vehicle was hit, but no one was hurt. 
This is not a terrorist thing. This is, this is somebody that obviously was impaired somehow and is driving very recklessly and endangering not only the public, but the law enforcement officers that are there. That's what this is. There was another woman in the SUV, but she was not arrested. A Kirby family forced out of their home by a fire on Scott Carpenter Drive. It seems there were 10 people in all inside this house when the fire broke out. One of them told me luckily they smelled the smoke and were able to get out safely. Luckily, no one was hurt. Right now, we don't know the extent of the damage or when the family might be able to return home. Take a look at this security camera video shows the car that was used during the escape of three prison inmates. Those inmates are linked to the Sinaloa cartel. Police arrested eight guards for their alleged collaboration in the plot. They've been charged with bribery. Here at home, a 34 year old man accused of wandering a north side neighborhood naked now behind bars. Gilbert Ramos Jr. charged with indecent exposure. The Bear County Sheriff's Office shared a blurred surveillance picture of a man walking through the Timberwood Park area yesterday. A neighbor and deputies who regularly patrol the area identified that man as Ramos. Chaos caught on camera on the Las Vegas Strip. A woman dressed as Minnie Mouse was recorded fighting with a security guard. <laughs> The fight apparently began after the security guard asked the woman to move from in front of a food court. Witnesses say as Minnie was moving, the guard allegedly called her a bad name. The guard was not seriously hurt. In Buffalo, New York, dash cam video shows a little girl falling from a moving car. The driver whose car captured that video says while a pickup truck in front of her was turning, a door opened and a small child fell onto the street. The driver picked the girl up and drove off. Police are now trying to track that truck down. Oscar Meyer has come up with a response to a recent news story involving a Wienermobile driver in Wisconsin. The driver was pulled over for not following the move over law. Now Oscar Meyer says it will be selling shirts with a photo of the Wienermobile on the side of the road. Proceeds will benefit the National Road Safety Foundation. A seven-year-old Girl Scout in West Virginia has sold cookies in all 50 states. Rory Clark used social media and her own website to reach customers all across the country. As she sold the cookies, she used a map to chart her progress. She ended up selling more than 700 boxes of cookies. To read more about these nine stories, go to ksat.com. Good evening, everyone. Let's start with some good news here. The pollen count is in Mountain Cedar and Mold, both low. That's what we like to see. Hopefully, Mountain Cedar season starting to wind down. We'll see these numbers stay low as we jump into February. Time lapse shows we had some clouds this morning, but most of those thinned out. We saw really a pretty nice day. Temperatures made it up to 62 for a high 47 was low this morning. We'll go a little bit colder than that by tomorrow morning, and this was a pretty average day. Records are 85 and zero. Zero, by the way, the all time coldest temperature ever seen here in San Antonio, and that was set back in 1949. There was actually snow on the ground that day. Not today. Uh, it was again really nice. We'll see a pretty nice weekend too. Temperatures right now 47 at the airport, 43 Boulevardi, 43 Bernie Stage. We're sitting at 47 in Honda, 50 in Divine. You can expect these temperatures to fall quite a bit more by tomorrow morning. And the future cast shows that those temperatures will dip. I'd say probably low 40s. This may be overdoing it a little bit, and maybe even some 30s in the surrounding areas. We've got the mostly clear skies, a couple clouds off to the west, and then tomorrow afternoon. We're back into the 70s. A lot of sun tomorrow. Saturday looks great. So does Sunday if you have plans to be outdoors. Forecast looks like this. 40 degrees to start, 63 by noontime, 70 for a high tomorrow, and we'll go mostly sunny here across the board. Winds will also be on the light side somewhere around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Satellite picture shows we've got uh, mostly clear skies, as I mentioned, but a couple showers out there, and we've been watching those showers work their way uh, towards San Antonio. It, it, these showers are really light. Not only that, there's some dry air at the surface. A lot of this probably isn't reaching the ground, but I can't rule out a few sprinkles, a few very light showers working through uh, central part of the viewing area next couple of hours. But that gets east to here, and once that moves east, again, skies will really start to clear out. And the reason we are seeing just a little bit of activity uh, this evening, there's a, a trough of low pressure moving through Texas. This is the final part of this energy uh, that brought us the clouds yesterday, too. That's just uh, moving out and uh, just that little bit of leftover energy is creating some of those showers. So the future cast shows that moves east. So do the clouds. And by tomorrow morning, we're mostly sunny and we see that 
through the day on Saturday. It's not until Monday that rain chances return to the forecast. So afternoon high temperatures 70 tomorrow, 74 Sunday. We just step it up here all the way to 80 by Tuesday. But then a cold front comes through and this really knocks down temperatures. I think this has the potential to be a pretty strong cold front right now. We're thinking highs low 50s, maybe some 40s in the hill country and 55 Thursday. So seven day forecast shows rain chances 20% there on Monday and then we'll go uh, 80 Tuesday as we mentioned, knocking those temperatures down to 50 Wednesday. It'll be windy. We'll get another rain chance with that cold front too, and then some clearing skies and breezy conditions by Thursday. Just because you see something trending online doesn't mean it's accurate. At the end of every week, the Associated Press puts together a roundup of some of the most popular but completely untrue stories and images of the past several days. And tonight we're focusing on the coronavirus. Let's take a look. Here's our first claim of the night. Images show the first building of a new hospital in the Chinese city of Wuhan, constructed in just 16 hours and completed on Monday. Chinese state media shared the image and it was widely spread on Twitter, implying that the new hospital had been built in a short amount of time to deal with the thousands of new patients who have contracted the coronavirus. But this image is actually a stock photo used to sell homes, offices, or hotel space. Here's another one tonight. Chlorine dioxide will help get rid of the coronavirus. Here are the facts. The FDA is warning people that they should not ingest the bleaching agent. The agency warns that drinking chlorine dioxide can cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and other symptoms of severe hydration. And the last claim we're fact checking tonight, FEMA is proposing martial law to contain the coronavirus. This would transfer power to the military, but officials with the Federal Emergency Management Agency confirmed to the AP that there are no plans to enact martial law in the U.S. And in case you missed it on KSAT News at 9 last night, we put together an explainer story breaking down what you need to know about the coronavirus. That includes how it spread to humans and the symptoms associated with the illness. Prevention as well. You can watch that on our website. Just go to KSAT.com slash news at 9. And we'll be back in just one minute. The impeachment trial of President Donald Trump appears to be coming to an end. In a narrow vote, Senate Republicans blocked Democratic efforts to extend the trial by introducing new witnesses and evidence. A trial without witnesses is simply not a trial. You can call it something else, but it's not a trial. GOP Senator Lisa Murkowski, who was a potential swing vote, issued a statement saying, quote, I've come to the conclusion that there will be no fair trial in the Senate. I don't believe the continuation of the process will change anything, end quote. The Senate has approved a resolution outlining how the rest of the trial will play out. So what comes next? On Monday, both sides will give closing arguments. Then after that, senators will be allowed to give statements. The Senate will then vote on the articles of, of impeachment and acquittal is expected. Meantime, in just three days, voters will weigh in for the first time on their pick for the Democratic presidential nomination. The Iowa caucuses are on Monday. A new Wall Street Journal NBC poll shows that former Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Bernie Sanders are very close leading the Democrats in Iowa. Looking ahead, voters in New Hampshire are the second to cast ballots in their primary on February 11th. Nevada's caucuses are the following week. On February 22nd, South Carolina voters will cast ballots the following week, February 29th. And then Super Tuesday, March 3rd, that's when voters in 14 states, including Texas, head to the polls. 
And turning to tonight's top stories, 64 U.S. military personnel have now been diagnosed with traumatic brain injuries after the Iranian missile attack in Iraq earlier this month. That is 14 more than the numbers the Pentagon released earlier this week. Of those 64 cases so far, 39 have returned to duty. The growing number of injuries indicates the attack was more serious than first reported. Britain has officially left the European Union after 47 years of membership. It's been more than three years in the making, but Brexit became official this evening at midnight in Brussels, where the EU is headquartered. The UK will still follow the EU's rules for 11 more months. San Antonio leaders are preparing to head to D.C. for an annual lobbying trip. It's organized by the Chamber of Commerce, but includes representatives from the private and public sectors. This has been going on for 42 years, but this year will have the biggest delegation with more than 200 people. The group includes business leaders, council members, representatives from SAWS and VIA. They'll be trying to secure federal funding for things like transportation and airport infrastructure. We have come to the end of another long week full of some big local headlines from an update in the battle over the Alamo Cenotaph relocation to the city of San Antonio paying tribute to Kobe Bryant after his death in a helicopter crash. Here's RJ Marquez with the week in 210. Residents at a Northside apartment complex wake up Tuesday to the sight of a truck that slammed into two parked cars. Police say the driver told him a deer caused her to crash through a fence, land on top of the cars, and come to a stop in the parking lot at the Walker Ranch Apartments off Blanco Road. I'm still in a state of awe. I'm, I'm still pretty shocked about it because this is just not something you wake up to say, oh, wow, there's two smashed cars in my apartment complex. Police say the woman who was driving was taken to the hospital to be evaluated for a DWI. Nobody was inside the two cars. A man is accused of brutally beating his mom to death. Michael Kerbo was arrested Wednesday night. Police say he killed his 76-year-old mother inside her Balcones Heights apartment after an argument. Neighbors were shocked. The Michael Kerbo I know, that is not, not, not him at all. Kerbo is charged with murder. The Bear County Jail passes its inspection this week after it failed a year ago. Last February, the Texas Commission on Jail Standards said the jail was not compliant in several areas. That included inmate supervision and having civilian employees undertake jobs they were not licensed or qualified to do. The jail also passed a surprise inspection in November. The Texas Historical Commission wants more time before it decides to approve the city's request to move the cenotaph that sits near the Alamo. The commission is asking the city to explain why it should be moved and a list of any potential alternate sites where the monument could be placed. The commission hopes to get this information during meetings in late March. The Spurs, the NBA, and people from around the world paid tribute this week to Lakers legend Kobe Bryant after a shocking crash on Sunday. Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and seven other victims were in a helicopter that crashed outside Los Angeles. The Spurs learned about Bryant's death moments before their game against Toronto. Both teams took 24-second violations to start the game in honor of Kobe's number 24. There are no words that can describe uh, how everybody feels. Let's find out what is trending on our website tonight with RJ Marcus. All right, Myra, it's been a, a fun Friday on KSAT.com so far, and uh, we start with uh, another big movie theater announcement. Yet another. <laughs> Didn't we just talk about this in trending we earlier did. this yes. week? These yeah. keep popping up. I know. We are becoming like the uh, the theater capital of Texas or something. Apparently <laughs> San Antonians love to go to the movies or else yes. these would yeah. not keep showing yeah. up. Yeah, I can. Uh, I will definitely agree with that. I love going to the movies and uh, Santico's here is opening up a new state of the art theater. I think at this point they're all kind of state of the art. Right. right? That okay. just sort of comes <laughs> with the new theater territory. Yeah, uh, this one is going to be off of uh, 1604 in Bulverde, so okay. kind of hitting up that north side area. It's uh, scheduled to open around uh, late 2021, so it's going to be a little bit of time, but uh, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Of course, all the amenities. I will say, and I don't know what this says about me, I got kind of excited when it said they have gonna that they're going to have a well-stocked bar. Ah, <laughs> <was like>. apparently <laughs> that is now required, though, for a lot of these theaters. It like, is. You can't just go get uh, a yeah. soda and some popcorn right. anymore. Yeah, yeah. I've seen people hanging out at the 
the bar. When you go into a movie, you come out, they're still hanging out. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there you go. So um, we have more information on this on our website and uh, pretty cool drone video too that we have oh. that kind of shows like where this is going to be. So yeah, okay. definitely check that one out. All right. All right. All right moving on here. Uh, Valentine's Day coming up. Yes. It is coming up fast. Oh man, and I just got a stark reminder here. Trending is apparently the place to get some really good ideas. We've been telling you guys yeah. about some interesting yes. ones. Yes, uh, we got a lot of interesting ones. And for some reason, it, they're always like cheap ideas. <laughs> the what was it? Why Castle? <laughs> That's what's trending. Cheap ideas for Valentine's Day. Cheap ideas. Day. I yes. This is what the people want to know about. I know. I thought about this earlier. It was like a Waterburger thing, a White Castle thing. A uh, Waffle House. Yeah. You so can make reservations for Valentine's Day. We got all Day, sorts apparently. of cheap stuff going on at uh, for Valentine's Day. <laughs> uh, this is kind of just a list of things to do around, and this isn't even cheap. This is like zero cost right oh, here so we're free. we've completely gone down <laughs> to zero cost <laughs> um so yeah these are some interesting ideas to do across the city and a lot of it is kind of uh you know just hitting up the tobin center and then going to the missions so uh it was kind of funny because i was like isn't this just normal stuff look at san antonio <laughs> and feel in love yeah i guess it doesn't matter and as long as you're your with wallet. there you yeah. go <laughs> Um, so we have a full list on our website. <laughs> it's, uh, I think one is out like Green Hall, which is actually kind of cool. I do like Green Hall. Oh yeah, so that's Green's pretty beautiful. Nice. Yeah. Um, so check that out on our website, ksat.com. All right, last one here. Of course, Super Bowl Sunday ah. coming up. Yes. Okay. And uh, one of the big things, of course, the Super Bowl ads. Yes. Yeah, a lot of people get excited about these. I am actually a little disappointed because it seems like every year these come out earlier and RJ, earlier. RJ, you are reading my mind. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing over the yeah. last few days. Mm -hmm. Isn't that, well, for me, <laughs> the point of yeah. watching the Super Bowl is to see the ads. Yeah. And yeah. now I've seen half a dozen of yeah, them. Yeah, they've. Uh, I guess this is kind of a trend that's been going on for some time now, right? Where they release them. So uh, we have ten right now on our website that if you want to see right now, you can go ahead and check them out. Well, then um, that just spoil it yeah. for everybody. <laughs> I still kind of do like seeing them, but at the same time, it's like, eh, you could kind of see this. I mean, right I guess now. if you like the ad, it's something mm. to look forward to yeah. that you're not going to miss during the right. game, right. but. Yeah. I like being judge and jury right there during the game. <laughs> there you, know? you go, yes. So hold off, companies, because Myra does not want to see your ad yes. before Super Bowl. Because so. that, that technique has worked before. Yeah, so uh, that is what is trending today, Myra, <laughs> in KSAT.com. Thanks, RJ. We'll be right back. Make your move, cowboy. I got the horses in the back, horse stock is attached. Head is mad at black, got the bushes black to match. Riding on a horse, ha, you can whip your Porsche. I've been in the valley, you ain't been up off that porch now. Nah, can't nobody tell me nothing. You can't tell me nothing. Can't nobody tell me That is all our time here on KSAT News at 9. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Myra Arthur. We'll see you right back here next week. Have a great weekend.